This morning's word is about reproduction. This morning, the Lord is asking us to multiply. But I want you to be attentive and receive this word, okay? This is a word of multiplication that I'm releasing over you today. Everybody in this place, you are about to go into a season of reproducing what God has given you. You know, there may have been a season where you, you were satisfied with the little that, that you know, you had in your bank account. You may be satisfied with the little that you had in your home. You may have been satisfied with the little that you've had in your resources. But this season, the Lord is about to multiply you supernaturally. The Lord is about to multiply you. I'm here to tell you what you have to do. Okay? This is the promise of the Lord. He wants to... Come on, shout multiply back to me. Can you multiply the decibels in this place? Yes. You know, throughout the service, uh, you know, the, when the worship was going on, Pastor Robin, he was bringing the decibel counter saying, oh no, we are overshooting the decibels. It's becoming too loud. And, and I, I don't want that to stop during the word. Can you please keep up the decibels? Yeah. Can you multiply your volume in this place? And, and everything that I declare this morning over you, I want you to articulate your faith by saying a yes and an amen. And receive it by faith. Because this is your portion for this coming week. This is your portion for this coming season. You will not be satisfied with lack. You will not be satisfied. You will not tolerate little. You will not tolerate little. But your faithfulness in these little things that has been entrusted into your hands will now attract plenty over your life in the name of Jesus. The book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. When we have the scripture on the screen, we read it together. Are you ready? Let's go. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and what? Loudly. And what? Loudly. Entrusted his money to them while he was gone. This morning, the Lord is saying, I am entrusting certain precious things into your hands. I'm entrusting. You are going to become a good steward. There are certain things that are being entrusted into your hands. They're not yours, but it is being entrusted in the sense that, hey, I, I'm going on a long trip. I need somebody to take care of my car, my house, my resources, my investments in India. I want you to take care of it. And so I am making you a steward of everything that I have. So it's not yours, but you are put in charge. Now the keys are in your hands. So the Lord is saying, I'm entrusting you with certain resources this season. And every one of us are in that family that the Lord is entrusting certain things with. Nobody's at them. Nobody's going to go back saying, oh, I didn't get anything. Every one of us, the Lord has entrusted certain things. He's gone on a long journey. You know, when Jesus said, I'm going to come back soon, we really expected it to be soon. But that's been a long journey. Yeah? But he has entrusted certain things to the church. And I'm declaring this over your life today, that you will discover what has been entrusted to you. You will not have a false narrative about your life, that you're good for nothing, that you're empty, that you don't have what it takes. You will know what has been entrusted to you, what has been given into your hands. The Bible says the next verse, he gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their Loudly. In proportion to their what? To their abilities. So, what we are lacking is that we are not constantly developing our abilities. We are wondering, why is it that God is not entrusting more into my hands? Is it because I'm not developing my abilities, developing my capacity, developing my strengths in certain areas? Is it because I'm I'm, I'm too caught up with these little battles in my life that I'm not growing in my ability 
to host the riches, the treasures that he wants to give it into my hands. See, it's easy to come to church and say, Lord, bless me. But today I'm declaring this over you. Not only will he bless you, but he's also giving you grace, wisdom, understanding, and revelation to grow in your ability. Because if you don't grow in your ability, you're going to waste what has been given to you. You are going to be weighed down by the treasure that has been entrusted into your hands. You will be overwhelmed. You will be panicking. You will waste what has been given to you. That is why the Lord wants us to grow in our ability. Okay? According to the proportion of their abilities. See, the master, he's, he, he, he knows what is good. He knows what is important. He knows who can handle how much. So according to their capacity, the master gave five bags of silver to one. Two bags of silver to another and one bag of silver to the third and he then left on his trip the first servant what did he do he received the five bags of silver and what did he do it says the person who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and he earned five more so the first person who, who received five bags of silver now, see, we may think, oh my God, he received so much. But this master, he was a very wealthy guy. He was very rich. He had a lot of money. But he gave a small amount. I will come to that portion later. But what, he, what was given to this five, five talents guy was still a very small amount. It was not all that he could have to live happy and wealthy for the rest of his life. It was still a very small amount. The Bible says he immediately went and invested that five bags of silver. He didn't say, let me keep back one for safety. He didn't say, let me, you know, be careful about this and, you know, let me take my time. He immediately started transacting with what was given to him. So this morning, the Lord is giving you investment opportunities. If, if you have a word, somebody else who needs to hear that word is going to come looking for you. If you have a resource, somebody else who needs that resource is going to come searching you out. If you have an ability, if you have something that God has put on the inside of you, investment opportunities are going to arise all around you. And the Lord will give you grace to release what has been entrusted into your hands. Please don't be stingy at this point. Please don't say, does this guy deserve all five bags of silver? Can I, can I give him one and give one to that guy, give one to this person? No, no, no. If the need is five bags, you give him all five. This guy, he, didn't, he was not stingy in investing all five bags of silver. It, it would have been a big risk putting everything a hundred percent. How many of you know that? It's, it's, if you're talking about business, it's not a good business choice. All the businessmen know this. You don't invest everything that you have in the same place. Yeah. So we're not talking about business here. We're talking about kingdom transactions here. Kingdom transaction doesn't work the way that businesses work. Business, you have to be careful. You, you split your you know, investment in 10 different things. But in the kingdom, you put your 100% because that's how God gave to us. God didn't say, let me you know, just send someone else. Let him go and die and let me see if that works. No, he gave his only begotten son, the one and only son. He gave his everything, his 100% for us. That is how this kingdom transaction works. So if you don't give you 100%, even in that five bags of silver, if you don't give your five bags of silver with your 100% devotion, attention, and, and you're, you're fully in on it, it wouldn't work for you. Some of us, we've, we've given resources, but our heart is not there. We've, some of us, our heart is there, but our resources is not there. You know, 
You understand what I'm saying? The Lord wants us to give a hundred percent. You have to first identify the treasures that are given to you, entrusted into your hands. You need to identify investment opportunities and you need to give a hundred percent. The servant with the two bags of silver, what did he do? He also went to work. So the first guy, he just invested. He just released the whole five bags. The second guy, he put that two bags of silver to work. That's the translation that I'm, I'm using from the NLT Bible. It says, this guy, he went to work with these two bags of silver. He, he started transacting with it. He started laboring with these two bags of silver. And sometimes, multiplication requires work. Sometimes, multiplication requires labor. Sometimes, multiplication requires constant, constant, you know, battles or constant struggle. There was a point where the Bible says, Isaac and Rebekah, they were not able to conceive, conceive for a long time. Finally, Isaac prayed and, and Rebekah conceived. And Rebekah, she is pregnant, but then there is a struggle. Every day it's a struggle. Every day there is a fight and every day she is in a lot of pain. She is worried. She is freaking out. You know, this is, these are not the days when there are good doctors, good gynecologists available to go for a checkup. So the only person that she could go to was her husband. She went to her husband and said, Man of God, what is happening to me? You need to give me an answer. Why is this pain? Why is this struggle? Why is this, why is this hard work? I thought God has blessed me. I thought God has said you will have a baby. Why is this constant struggle? Isaac was like, I'm sorry, I didn't graduate from the medical school either, but let me go pray. And he went and prayed. And the Lord told him, there are two nations in your womb. And these two nations, they are going to be at, at war all the time. And that war has already begun. Wow. <laughs> you know, see, all that Rebecca expected was a baby. But what she was receiving was two nations. Two nations were in her womb. And so this birthing process was a painful process. It was not so easy. So if you think that I want to multiply, I want to grow, I want to change, I want to become better, and it is going to come, you know, by me sitting at home, watching Netflix, by me being myself, it's not going to happen. There is hard work involved in certain multiplication, certain reproduction that the Lord wants you to do. What has been entrusted into your hands is too valuable for you to say, I, I'm going to now sit and relax. We are wasting our time and our resources and, and we are in fact wait, wasting God's resources by us not putting those talents to work. The Bible says, but the servant who received one bag of silver, verse 18, he dug a hole in the ground and he, what did he do? And he hid the master's money. The first person invested, the second person worked, the third person hid. In hiding, he was actually trying to protect it. You know, what do you hide? Something that is important. It's not like you're you have a bad intention towards it. It's not like you're running away with this money. You're actually trying to protect it. You're trying to protect yourself. You're saying, no, I, I, I know what happens if I would, you know, take out a bundle of notes in Shivaji Nagar, in the market. If I take a big bundle of notes, what will happen? I don't know. What happens? Anybody? <laughs> You'll get mobbed. Somebody will come and snatch it. So what do you do? You, you would naturally want to keep it hidden. You would lock it up with multiple layers. It will not even be visible when you open your bag. It will be in, inside, inside, three, four pockets inside. Right? Why? Because you don't want to show it to everybody. You, you want to hide it so that it is not easily taken. And so many of us, we've gone through life long enough 
to have experienced so much trauma, so much pain, so much of betrayal, that now we, we, we don't want to invest anymore. Now we don't want to work anymore. Now we are afraid of what is going to happen if I don't hide this, if I don't keep it in. The moment I bring it out, I know what people will say. The moment I testify about it, I know how they will look at me. I'm too afraid of their judgmental eyes or their judgmental words. I know how, what, they, what comment they will put on my Instagram post. Yeah, that's how we, we transact nowadays, right? We are so afraid of, of what will happen when I bring what God has given into my hands to the forefront. Because everybody is going to laugh at me. Everybody is going to mock me. Or there are going to be some people who are even going to attempt to steal it off of me. In fact, the, the Bible says that there was a group of Pharisees who were very intentional and they planned and they prepared to kill Lazarus. Why? Because Lazarus being alive was a big testimony to the fact that Jesus is the real, right? And they wanted to kill Lazarus just to make sure the testimony dies. And so, yeah, there are real goons like that out there on Facebook or in your neighborhood or some of them maybe even in your own church. Not this church, I'm talking about, you know, what I mean? Some people who may actually want to kill your testimony, kill what God has done for you, kill what has been entrusted into your hands. Instead of appreciating, wow, you have one talent. There are going to be those voices that are going to look down on you saying, what's this one talent for? Compare that with my five talents. And you know, there are going to be definitely those voices that are going to try and hurt you, that are going to try and demean you. My question is, what are you going to do about it? See, the two-talent guy also could have fallen prey to the same fear, the same temptation and say, everybody is now going to compare me with the five-talent guy. And everybody will know the master gave me less, which means I have less ability, which means I, I, I don't have what it takes to carry five talents or five bags of silver. Everybody is going to question me. Everybody is going to look down. He could have used the same logic and hidden his two talents. But he said, no, no. I know the purpose of something that is being given to me. It is so that me, I can be fruitful and I can multiply. So I'm going to take the two talents as small as it looks. I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it to the point of embarrassment, to the point of people looking down on me, to the point of people calling me names. I don't care. I am still going to use my two talents. But the third guy, he falls prey to the voices in his head. And he says, no, I'm just going to hide this. I'm just going to keep this under wraps. This morning, I'm praying that those things that are fears in your head that is stopping you from utilizing what God has given to your hands, those fears, may there be a a supernatural hand that will come and close your ears to those voices. In this house, nobody will be able to hide their treasures. In this house, nobody will be able to hide what God has entrusted into their hands. If you hide, we have a lot of prophets here who will come and bring it out. <laughs> who will come and pull it out of you, okay? So it's better you come and show it than we coming and saying, I know there is one hidden in your left pocket. It's better that you bring it out. In this house, we are not going to waste what God has given us. And please understand, there are going to be naysayers all the time. There are going to be people who will look down on your one talent, who will look, look down on that little that you have. There are, you, you will never have a time when, you know, you, you wanted to do something good and there were not people who, who had a problem with it. You know, you know the story of how Nehemiah built the wall around the city. These guys, they were, you know, very foolish things. They were saying, even a fox can knock down this building. You know, one of the arguments that they brought, a fox or a dog, I don't know. Fox? He said, even a fox can, you know, destroy this wall that you're building. Can you imagine? Nehemiah, he has left his 
sits seven figure salary and he's come and he's laboring here in the you know desert in the middle of nowhere he is uh, trying to build a t- wall with no salary he's not even taking a salary you know he has a governor's income in jerusalem he's not even taking that and he's serving the lord there and the people around him they say you know what even a fourth can take this down you know how discouraged it could be how much discouraged nehemiah can be but i'm speaking into your spirit right now that there is an ability that the lord is giving you to shut your ears to those voices you you will not be guided by your enemies your you have prophets that god has placed above your life who are the ones that are supposed to guide you is it your critics or is it the prophets that god has given you is it the voice of god that is going to become your gps or the accusatory voice of the enemy that is going to become your you know limitation and and you're going to say this is all that i can do no please please don't yield to what the enemy is saying when you come and tell me this person said this this person said that my first question is going to be this what did i tell you what did god tell you who will you choose to believe more me or them if you believe they are your prophets then why are you coming to me for help if you believe they are the destiny helpers in your life they are the ones who are going to declare how much you can do and how much you cannot do then please by all means go to them not to me if you're coming to me you have to believe that what i speak over your life is the truth that is your ability that is what god will do through your life you cannot make their speech over your life your reality yeah even if it is dangerous to hold out your one bag of silver in public some of you the lord is giving you divine boldness yeah in jesus name you're going to invest you're going to work and you're going to serve in a way that there is going to be fruits of multiplication in your life there is going to be fruit of divine production divine reproduction in your life the little that he has given you you are going to be able to multiply it in jesus name the bible says in verse 19 after a long time everybody say after a long time their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money the day of accounting is coming soon the day is coming soon in our church let me say this there is going to be a sudden acceleration of our timeline and we will already be in revival and then it will be too late you understand what i'm saying i'm not just talking about the second coming of jesus where jesus sits on the throne and i'm talking about the physical manifestation of jesus in our church when revival comes here then it may be too late for you to say i also have some resources i also know how to do this. it is now is the time this is the preparation time this is the process we are working towards that arrival now is the time for you to multiply use it bring it to light let it be utilized for the glory of god when revival comes we will be caught up if then we will be you know in that atmosphere then it will be too late for us to make any changes so now that you still have time you need to go speak to your pastors and say pastor i can i can play this instrument you know i have not told you till now but i can do this or you can go and say pastor i i'd like to serve the kids in the church pastor i'd like to help with this particular area can i can i i, I don't have anything else but i can definitely take out this much money from my income every month for this particular project that you have whatever resource you ha- you are able to give to the lord that you've kept it in hiding can you bring it to light this season when there is still time before the day of accounting comes the bible says the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver he came forward with five more and said master you gave me five bags of silver to invest and look at this i have earned five more 
May we all have that testimony. When revival comes, may we not be found hiding. When Jesus comes, may we not be found ashamed. When a true visitation of the Lord comes to our church, may we not be found empty. May we have something to show. This is, this is, what I have, this is how I have trained myself. When God opens a door, you will not be surprised saying, oh, this also, God wanted me to do this also. No, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, I was ready for it. I was born for this. I, I was made for this all along. I've been praying for it. I've been building altars for it. I've been studying, reading books about it. This is what I've been preparing myself for all along. Nobody should be surprised by the doors that open before you. When a businessman comes and tells you, I'm going to invest five crores into your company, you shouldn't be like, okay, what, should, what do I do with it? You'll be like, yeah, 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 I know. I was preparing for it. I was ready for it. I, I, I have worked hard. And I know this is where, this is how we're going to use this. Verse 21, it says, The master, he was full of praise. May this be said about you. May your master have praise for you. Some of you have praise for your master. But may the reverse be true. May your master have praise for you. May your king talk good about you. May God have praise for you. Please, please, we, we, we are not just a church that is here to praise God. We are also here to receive praise from Him. Not from one another, but from Him. We are here to receive praise from our Master. The Master, the Bible says, He was full of praise. Well done! <laughs> May this be said over your life. Well done! May this be said over your marriage. Well done! Oh, may this be said about your prayer life, your resources, your finances, your business opportunities, your ministry. Well done. May this be spoken over you in the mighty name of Jesus. My good and faithful servant. Not only faithful, but also, not only good, but also faithful, my good and faithful servant. This morning, we're receiving an impartation. You know, when we read the word, we're receiving the grace that is hidden in that word, right? So this morning, we're receiving an impartation to be good and faithful with whatever God has entrusted us. If God has entrusted us with money, we will be good and faithful with it. We can't just be faithful. We have to be good with it. Because the guy who, who hid the money, he thought he'll just be faithful. He didn't want to be good about it. He didn't want to prosper it, multiply it. Whatever you do, you will be good at what you're doing. Husbands, are you hearing me? You will be a good husband in your house. Fathers and mothers, are you listening to me? You will be a good parent. You will be excellent at your work. Wives, mothers, let me speak over you. You will be good at your job. You will be faithful in your job in the name of Jesus. You will not just be faithful, you will also be good. There will be a spirit of excellence in what you do. May the Lord say this about you. May He be full of praise for you when He says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this. Handling what? This. See, for the guy with the five bags, you know, he's thinking, man, so much. But the master's perspective is, I gave you small. I gave you little. What you think is so big is actually not so big. What you have received is very little, very small. We cannot make our resources, what God has entrusted into our hands, we can, we, we can never look down on it. See, the servants, the master can say this is small, but the servants never called it small. The servants, for them, this is everything. They have never seen silver in their life. This is the first time silver is being entrusted into their hands. And they were grateful. See, what, what you're receiving, what you have in your hands, in your spirit, 
It may be small compared to the person sitting next to you. It may be small in heaven's economy. But the day that you start to devalue it and you start to call it small, that's, that resource will stop working for you. You have to embrace it like this is the whole wealth of heaven. This is everything. The master said, guess what? I only give you small. But get, look at how you have done so well. You've been faithful. You've been so good in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. So when revival comes, your responsibilities are only going to multiply. Only if you've been doing good in this season will you be able to carry the multiple responsibilities that will come to you. The, the multiple revelations that will come to you. If you've not been able to, you know, study this one hour sermon and go and meditate on it, stand on it, receive it, you know, walk in it during the week, you think that when revival comes and when there is three, four hours of teaching, <laughs> you'll be able to handle that. <laughs> you'll be like, church, <laughs> I, I have to change my church. My church, uh, the, the pastor preaches too long. Because you can't handle that. If you've been faithful with the little, you'll be given much more. The servant who had received the two bags of silver, he came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest. And guess what? I have earned two more. He, he's like, I knew from the moment that you gave it into my hands, I know why you gave me. You didn't give it to me to hide. You gave it to me so I can multiply so I can be fruitful with it so that I can invest it you gave it to me to invest and guess what I have earned two more the master said well done my good and faithful servant you've been faithful in handling this small amount so now I will give you many more responsibilities let's celebrate together your celebration's coming okay but the process towards the celebration may be hard work. But there is a day when you will celebrate all those long nights of prayer, all those long nights of studying, all those long nights of seeking in reading the word and praying in tongues and all those long labor that you put in into multiplying what God has been giving you. There is a day of celebration that is coming. It's waiting. It's right at the door. Before you know, you will experience it in the name of Jesus. Verse 24. Are you ready for some bad news? It says, Then the servant with the one bag of silver came. And look at his excuses, okay? And he said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. You're harvesting crops that you didn't plant, gathering crops that you didn't cultivate. So he, he's saying, this is why I did not multiply. This is what limited me. This is what caused me to be content with my one bag of silver. It is because I knew something about you. I knew something about you. And if you read the next line, the master is not justifying himself and he's saying, why are you saying this? Don't you know I have also worked? Don't you? He's not saying. He's like, yeah, what you, let's assume what you're saying is true. You will be limited to your revelation of who your God is. If your revelation of your God is that he's a harsh God, that he is a, you know, dictator, if your revelation of your God is that He is not working on your behalf, then you will remain unproductive for the rest of your life. You have to come to terms with the fact that, yeah, it is good that my master doesn't cultivate. He has servants. That's why my master doesn't have to cultivate. He has servants like that. The day that he begins to cultivate, I will be out of job. Come on. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing that my master doesn't <laughs> cultivate it himself. 
it's a good thing that god has given the responsibility into my hands so god is not trying to be a dictator over you at the day that god says hey i don't need you anymore let me do it myself ha huh. i'm telling you all of us will be on the sidelines watching the work of god and we will be sad why didn't god use me why didn't god send me this i i could have done this for him i could have been used by him for this and so the revelation this guy had was not wrong it was not false so i'm not talking about those people that are in the wrong church with the wrong doctrine with the wrong revelation we may be in an atmosphere where there is good theology solid good theology and yet our understanding of god can be limited somebody told me once one youtube video i saw or this is what my previous church used to you know talk about so your your experience of god has been restricted to that now you're wondering why is it that you're not producing fruit why is it that you're not able to do anything more the bible says there was this point where michael the wife of king david came to him and said why are you dancing like a fool why are you making yourself undignified <laughs> michael she didn't have a revelation of why he was dancing david had a revelation of why he was dancing david is like tera baap ne nahi banaya mere ko you know that's exactly what she that exactly he said it's not your father who made me wealthy it is my god who made me wealthy he's it's my god who made me who i am and i will become even more undignified than this and guess what happened it says from that day onwards michael she was barren she was not fruitful her revelation of god limited her her revelation her understanding of what god can do limited her. she could never bear fruit after that my prayer is that there will be no one in this place see it's okay to have doubts or fears or questions guess what we are all here we are all journeying together you can come talk to us let's discuss you know bring your fears let's let's speak some faith into your heart let me share my testimony of what jesus did for me and and you share your fears and and let me share my reason of believing why he still heals you share your brokenness and i'll explain to you how he is near the broken hearted you 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 share your struggles and i will explain to you those nations that is growing on the inside of you it's okay to bring your fears to the table but it's not okay for us to tolerate a substandard understanding about god because our belief about god can cause us to be unfruitful to cause us to be unproductive the next verse i was afraid i was afraid i would lose the first reason why he was unproductive was because he didn't believe in god completely the second reason why he was unproductive was because he didn't believe himself he's like i was afraid of myself i know what i did the last time i was in a relationship i was afraid what happened to me the last time i picked up a job i was afraid i can never make it to the end point and i was afraid of losing so guess what happened i actually did nothing that's why i said i know that there are voices there are people that are trying to you know threaten you make you do everything to make sure that you don't do anything with your one bag of silver but this morning i want you to believe in yourself look at your neighbor and say doesn't matter how i look this morning i am made in the image of god i am made in his likeness i have his abilities all things are possible through me no no i didn't say god all things are possible through me and now i want you to go and live your next one week with that belief system that says ah 
I know who I am. I don't care. I'm not going to sit and compare my one bag of silver with that guy who can play guitar and drums and keyboard and, and every other instrument. All I can do is clap. Brother, clap well. The glory of God will come down in your clapping. You don't need to know everything else. Do you know, do you know how to sing two lines? You may not be able to sing like some of the singers on the stage. That's okay. We'll not put you on the mic. Don't worry. But can you sing with your whole heart? Can you give you a hundred percent? Can you say, I'm, I, I'm not going to lose. I'm not going to lose. I, I'm not going to let my yesterday define my today's investment. I'm not going to define my yesterday's trauma define today's ministry. I'm not going to let yesterday's problems define how I serve God today. The Lord has called me for a great work of multiplication and I will not hold back in the name of Jesus. I will not hold back. He says, I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. So he didn't lose it. He was a he, he was faithful in that way, right? He didn't lose it. Like if, if I entrusted something into your hands, if I give you my car and I go back and come and I see there is no dent on it, that you didn't misuse it, you didn't, you know, use my insurance to revamp, <laughs> you didn't have to do all of that, what would I say? Ah, oh, thank you. You've been, you've been faithful. Yeah, that's exactly what this guy is doing. He didn't lose it. He hid it. He protected it. Let's listen to the response of the master. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. You're wicked because you have no revelation of who I am. You're lazy because you didn't dig yourself to see what you're capable of doing. You're wicked because you lack in your belief system about your God. You're lazy and that's why you're, you're lazy because you've not studied yourself well. You've not studied what you are capable of doing. And so the master says, you're wicked and you're lazy. If you knew I harvested crops that I didn't plant and I gathered crops that I didn't cultivate, verse 27, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest in it. He's saying this. He's saying, if you didn't believe in me, nor did you believe in yourself, why didn't you give what you had to someone else? <laughs> you should have trusted at least your neighbor. They would have done something with it. They could have used it. You didn't use it. You didn't believe in me. You didn't believe in yourself. Nor did you believe in one another. Nor did you believe in the church that could have taken the little that you have. They could have multiplied it, right? See, the, the guy with the five loaves and two fish, he didn't know how to feed a multitude. But he knew how to give it to the right bank. He knew how to deposit in the right hands. Yeah, some of you, you're, you're, you're like, uh, Pastor, I, I, have n I, I don't know. I'm very clueless. It's okay, come. Give what you have to us. We will multiply it for you. We will use it for God's glory. It's okay if you don't understand your God. It's okay if you don't understand yourself. Bring your talents still. We will use it for God's glory. But that's not the only way we can, use, we can be used. We have to be used because we understand our God, because we understand ourselves, and we understand the importance of, of our fellowship, the church where we are planted in, the bank that is given to us to deposit and to bring our resources in. Amen? Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. That's not fair. Then he says, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. May it be said of you that you use well. It says, and they will have an abundance. May this abundance come to you. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name that God would have to take something away from you. It's one thing if the enemy comes to steal from you. 
It's another thing when God says, ah, he's not using it well. Give it to the other guy. He may, he may use it better. No, no, no. Sorry. We don't want to fall in that category. We are in the category of people that use our bags of silver well. We are among the category that will have an abundance. Are you ready to read the next line? And everybody say, ouch, when you read this, okay? Now, throw this useless servant into outer darkness. Heaven calls some people useless. And they are not unbelievers, okay? See, unbelievers are the ones who lose the one talent that is given to them. So this guy is not an unbeliever. He is a believer. He believes. He knows. He has a relationship with the master. He didn't lose the one talent. He brought the one talent back. And yet, heaven says, this guy is useless. God is looking for useful people in the church. He is a good businessman. He knows how to invest according to our abilities. So when he is invested into you, he knows you are capable of bringing results. So heaven says, sorry, this guy, useless. But guess what? That's not going to be your story or my story. The book of John chapter 15 and verse 16. I want you to read it out loudly along with me. One, two, three, go. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Do you see the same principle here? He says, I chose you. You didn't come asking for these talents, but I chose you. I gave you these talents. Why? So that you can go and produce something with it. You can reproduce this five bags of silver. And when you reproduce it, when you make it 10, make you, when you make it 4, when you make it 2, it says, when you produce lasting fruit, the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. To those who have, to those who multiply, even more will be given. Much more will be added to them. But this production process can be painful. It may require for us to lay ourselves down to sacrifice ourselves. That's why Jesus said, John 12, 24, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it, but it's death, what will it do? It will produce new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. So may the Lord give us the grace to die to our treasures to let go of that treasures you know the moment it leaves our pocket has to we have to die to it and say it's okay I'm, I'm, I'm releasing my attachment to this because I know it is going to produce a harvest for me a harvest for the kingdom of God that's why God said to Abraham because God was planning to give him a huge harvest so God told him Genesis 22 verse 2 take your son Yes, yes, your only son. Yes, Isaac, the one whom you love so much. Not one among the many, but your only one. Not the one that you don't love, but the one that you really, really love so much. And go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Why? Because God was preparing Abraham to become a father of many nations. God was preparing for great abundance to come through Abraham's lineage. So God said, take your one son, your only talent, your, whatever is given to you, the one that you really, really love, the one that you're so possessive about, your space, your resources, your money, that you're thinking, oh, I, I, this is mine. The Lord is saying, go to the mountain, climb up to the mountain and put that on the altar. And let me use that to build nations through your life. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 1. The word says, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. This is how business works. 
Is this how business works? No, this is not how business works. In the business, you, you keep a track. You, you know, if you've invested into a particular stock market, it's there on your app. You're constantly checking if it's going up or down, if it's coming closer or farther. You're, you're tracking this. It's not like putting a bread on the water. You, you know, the, the man of God says, you release the talents that God has given you. Do you have bread in your hands? Release it. There is water flowing in the house of God regularly. Eh? So come and release it. And you will find it back after many, many days. And when it comes back to you, because you've already died to that one kernel of wheat, when it produces fruit, it doesn't come back the same way that it was released. When it comes back, it comes back multiplied, reproduced in a new format. And this time it will produce a huge harvest. So the Lord is saying, everything that is, that is, you know, stopped your fruitfulness till today. It is, it is coming to an end. Every lie that has stopped your fruitfulness till today, it is being silenced. Every voice that has been hurting your fruitfulness, it is being overpowered. And there is a, there is a greater voice that is being spoken over you today. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15. Until at last, read it with me. Until at last, the Spirit is poured out on us from heaven. Then the wilderness will become a fertile field. Anybody feeling dry here? The Lord is saying, you will become fertile. Because what you have received today is a portion of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit, He's a person, right? He's one person. And yet, He has many dimensions and many layers that He releases into our lives. There is a spirit of healing that He can release into our life, right? So there is a many dimensions that He releases. This morning, what He has released in this place is a grace for multiplication. So what He's saying is, all the dry wilderness, the deserts are now going to become fertile all of a sudden. If your womb has been barren, all of a sudden your womb is going to open up. And you're going to become fertile in Jesus' name. The next line, it says, And the fertile field will yield bountiful crops. Everybody say, the fertile field will yield, not crops, but bountiful, abundant crops. More than enough. So when the Spirit of God comes, He accelerates wherever, whichever season you are in. Some of you are, are in the infertile season. So suddenly you will become fertile. Suddenly you will start seeing some results. Some of you are seeing results, but not enough. But suddenly you will start seeing abundance. Suddenly you will start seeing great multiplication come upon you. This is the word of the Lord. I'm not saying this. This is what the Lord is saying. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, every wilderness will turn into a fertile land. And every fertile land will yield bountiful crops in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 47 and verse 12. Receive it with all your heart. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of this river. Everybody say all kinds. This is not just finance, financial blessing I'm talking about. Spiritual blessings, marital blessings, relational blessings. Ah, talk about it. You know, you, you, whatever is your need, all kinds of fruits. Ministry blessings, blessings in your walk with God, great favor in your prayer life. All kinds of fruits will come forth on both sides of this river. Do you know you're sitting in a river right now? Do you know there is a stream flowing here? Do you know that this, uh, something is coming off from this altar into your homes? At both sides of the river, all kinds of fruits, all kinds of fruits. Please understand, this is not a ministry that is limited to one kind of fruit. This is a ministry that deals with all kinds of fruits. The Bible says, the leaves of this tree will never turn brown and fail. <laughs> the leaves of this tree will not fade away. See, leaves are meant to turn brown and fall. 
Yeah, there is a season of fall where leaves, they, the green leaves, they become brown and they fall off. But this tree, it is not the tree of this earth. This is not a, you know, business that is manufactured by good motivational talks. This is a business that is born from a connection with heaven because of something that was entrusted into my hands by the King of Kings. So I declare this over your life. The leaves of this tree, it will not turn brown in Jesus' name. There is no expiration date for what God is giving into your hands. There is no end day. It will be consistently fruitful. This fruitfulness, it will last till eternity. In the mighty name of Jesus. It says, the next line, <laughs> and there will always, everybody say always. always. And there will always be fruit on the branches. <laughs> Somebody say, I receive it. It shall never be said of you that uh, he's having a bad day. Yeah. May it never be said about your home that they are going through a bad season. There will always be fruits in your branches. There will always be results. There will always be answers. There will always be solutions. You will not be called barren anymore. There will always be children in your quiver. You will always have victory whenever you, whenever you step into the battlefield. Your quiver will be full of arrows. In the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready for the next line? It says, there will be a new crop every month. In the natural, new crops happen every year. But this is not a natural river we are talking about. It says there will be new crops every month. Why? Because they are watered by the river. <laughs> not, not flowing from a natural source. They are watered by the river that comes from this altar, from this temple, from a place of, of glory. They are watered by the river that comes from the temple. Because of which, because of which, the Bible says there will be new crops every month. So what you produced in the last season once a year, whatever is your annual salary, may that become your monthly salary in the name of Jesus. Whatever you would, whatever growth you would experience in your walk with God over a year, May that be how much you will grow every month in the name of Jesus. May there be divine acceleration. Divine acceleration. Divine acceleration. Why? Because you're feeding from the river that is coming from the temple. Oh, you're not feeding from the river that comes on news. You're not feeding from the river that comes from your boss. No, 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 no. You're feeding from the river that comes from a temple from a place where the presence of God is hosted and because of that you will have new crops every month the fruit will be for food <laughs> and the leaves for healing so you see do you see there is need for healing and there is need for building the fruit is for building the leaves are for healing so you will have what it takes to fix yourself. You will not have to go back before your employer or before a counselor or before someone else saying, please pray for me, please do something. No, 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 no. You will have the leaves that is required for your healing. You will not be at someone else's mercy. Not only will you have the leaves, you will also have the fruit that you require to be built up for the next season of your life. The leaves are, your, are for your healing and the fruit is for your food, for your building, to take you to the next level. Can you stand up with me for this next verse as we read this? Psalm chapter 92 and verse 12. But the godly, I'm speaking over you and I call you godly. Yeah? Because you're not wicked, 
Because you're not lazy, you're godly. Yeah. The other day I, I sent out a tweet. When God was speaking this word to me, I tweeted this out. I want you to go back and retweet it and probably even memorize that if you can. I said, from your regular routine, your daily routine, if there is, if there is no need for a daily dependence on God, then there is nothing godly that is being produced from your life. If your, if your daily routine requires you to depend on God day in and out, morning and evening, you have to pray and cry for mercy and wait on the Lord and, and seek His help. That means you're giving birth to something that is really good. That means you're giving birth to something really godly. And I thank God for the godly ones in this place. Because the godly ones, lift your hands and receive this. But the godly ones will flourish like palm trees. Ha! The spirit of flourishing come upon you in Jesus' name. And the godly ones, they will grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. May this be a season when you grow strong. May this be a season when you go from strength to strength from little strength to much more strength in the name of Jesus it says they are planted in the house of the Lord may you be planted in the house of the Lord may you not be uprooted may your roots go down may you know who your God is may you know where your bank is and may you know what you are capable of doing and the Bible says they flourish where? In the courts of our God. We don't flourish in the corporate. We flourish right here, right now. This is your moment of victory. This is your moment of prosperity. This is your moment of breakthrough. They flourish in the courts of our God. When we dance, when we worship, when we meet with our King, that is where we flourish. That is why when we come into the courts of the Lord, we come with thanks. That is why we come with an offering. That is why we come with a song of praise. Why? Because we flourish in the courts of our God. The Bible says, even in old age, anybody feeling old in this place yet? <laughs> the Bible says, even in old age, they will produce fruit. Your leaves will not turn brown and fall. Instead, they will remain white and green in the mighty name of Jesus. There is divine fruitfulness that is coming upon you. The Lord is saying, everyone in this place that is saying, ah, I'm too old for this. I'm too tired for this. I'm too weak for this. There's too much lack in my life. The Lord is saying, no, no, no. You will say, because of your commitment to the house of God, the Lord will turn your life around. You will produce fruit and you will remain vital and green. And this is what they will declare. Come on. They will declare, the Lord is just. He is my rock and there is no evil in him. One more time. The Lord is just. He is my rock and there is Let's make that our declaration. Guys, let's go. The Lord is just. He is my rock. And there is no evil in Him. One more time. The Lord. And there is. The Lord. He is just. He is my. Like, like the first two servants who didn't find evil in their master. The third guy, he found evil in him. We, we, we are not that. We are not the third category. We say the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. Come on, dance. The Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. 
Oh, the Lord is just. Oh, the Lord is just. Hey, hey. The Lord is just. The Lord is just. There's no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is. Oh, there's no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. There's no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. There's no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. There's no evil in him. The Lord is just. There's no evil in him. The Lord is just. He is my rock. There's no evil in him. The Lord is So Father, I bless your children with supernatural abundance, with supernatural fruitfulness, beyond their capacity. This week you are giving us the grace to increase our capacity, increase our abilities. And Father, we thank you for this coming revival. We will do great and mighty works. Even before the revival comes, we will be ready. We will be prepared. We would have put on our clothes and we are not going to be found naked or ashamed. Yes, we are going to be found ready with oil in our lamps and our five talents multiplied, our two talents multiplied, our one bag of silver multiplied. We thank you, Lord, for you are going to give us great grace this season. We bless your children from the front to the back those that are watching us on YouTube, to those that are watching us on podcast, from those that will watch immediately now and even the ones that will watch later, we speak a blessing upon them in the name of Jesus and they will flourish in the courts of their God. We give you all praise, glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And everybody said an Amen. amen. And everybody said an amen.